Hey guys, I'm here in the Vercors with uh, Gaëtan Maé. Um, hey there. I'm a big admirer of his landscape photography. And something that always struck me about landscape photography is we tend to think about it as something very static, like just uh, standing there with a tripod having static images. Well, the whole mountain landscape and the forest and the clouds can be very dynamic but slow moving environment. So when you do landscape photography, you basically become a magician where you compress time so you can see the, see the slow moving spectacle all of a sudden come to life in quite an extreme way. And uh, since I'm admiring what he does here in these forests in his backyard, I came out here to visit him and to ask him about why did you start time-lapse photography and do you have some pointers for us just if, to get going. The very first time I went out with the intention of uh, capture a time lapse was uh, in a small uh, town that is called uh, Andance, which is a, a small city uh, near a big river, which is uh, the Rhône. And I just moved uh, onto a viewpoint that had a small village and uh, the river passing by. Uh, which was an incredible view and this is where I made my first time-lapse and I found this uh, really interesting because uh, you have two, two ways of uh, seeing things. First, the, you have a, a time-lapse where you see the world moving differently and uh, it's kind of amazing uh, that every detail that uh, you don't see in the real time scale uh, is uh, enhanced with the, the time-lapse uh, experience. And then while uh, I launch uh, the time-lapse, when while the time-lapse is running, uh, I can also uh, be more creative, um, walk around, fi uh, find new spots, uh, find my next shot, uh, etc. So it's also a good way to uh, be creative because the camera camera is there and it's running and so you have to uh, to find another occupation and um, find other spots uh, it's kind of um, force you to look around and uh, and find new inspiration somewhere without a camera continually shooting When I did my first uh, time lapses, uh, the mistakes I made first uh, was not really technical mistakes because you can easily find uh, the the way uh, of um, how to make good uh, time lapses uh, technically. But uh, what ye beginners usually forgot is that not everything is good looking with the uh, time lapse. For example, here in the forest, uh, there we have almost no sun, uh, it's really cloudy, so the light is quite linear, um, the sky is flat, there is clouds, but uh, not really textured clouds, it's just uh, flat and uh, whole uh, uniform grey. And here in the forest, we don't have anything moving. So if I'm just time-lapsing this area, it's just like a still picture. It, it doesn't have any sense. and. That's, I think, a point that beginner often um, for, forget about because uh, to make a time lapse, you have to find something moving, and I would say something moving slow, like clouds, like um, uh, for example, uh, it can be water waves, or um, <coughs> it can be the the sun and the shadows in the the late uh, late evening. So. The first thing about time-lapsing is not really the technical part, it's uh, always find a good subject and find something that will have a good render in time-lapse. Even if you are in, I, let's say, 11 a.m. Uh, with a pure blue sky with no clouds, you can time-lapse uh, you can time lapse the, the landscape, but it won't be really interesting because Nothing is moving in the in the subject unless you time lapse. You make a time lapse during for the whole day, but um, usually the moments and the places I 
think is uh, interesting to um, to look at is the cloudy cloudy moments uh, when you have uh, beautiful clouds nicely textured uh, sunset moments when uh, for example you see the the sun in uh, front camera and uh, you see it going behind the mountains that's also a really interesting uh, point sea cloud sea of clouds is a, a really really good subject as well because it's like at the time lapse scale, sea of, uh, the sea of cloud is uh, behaving like a real sea. Like you see waves of cloud like crushing into the the cliffs and uh, going back. So each of these scenes are made for time lapses, but some others are not. And for the technical part, it's quite easier because you have to follow some simple rules that I'll explain just uh, afterwards. But uh, you just have to stick to this and it will be convenient for most of the situations. All right, so uh, what you should focus on at the beginning when you're starting your first time lapses is first you have to pick up a moment of the day where the luminosity is not too changing because you will want to have manual setting at first. You can you can do something else, but it's really more complicated because uh, to handle, for example, a day to night time lapse, uh, you have to get into more software that uh, post processing and st so on. So at first, I will advise you to start with um, uh, a scene where the light is quite constant so uh, it can be it can even be the, the sunset or sunrise but um, do not try to make a day to night time lapse or uh, or something like this and um, uh, set all your settings in manual so first what I usually do is I set myself in aperture mode I set the aperture I want so I have the, um, the depth of field that, that I want and then I usually press uh, half the button to see what shutter uh, do I have. So then I report the, sh the same shutter into manual, that uh, lazy technique but it's working. Um, and then I have all my manual uh, setting on. Don't forget to um, lock the ISO values because you don't want the, your ISO going 100, 200, 100 because it will uh, introduce light flashes into the frame, into the final com composition, sorry. And then uh, don't forget also to uh, focus, uh, make the autofocus and then switch the focus to manual once the autofocus is done. So you have a focus that stay consistent. Uh, I don't know if maybe a bird is passing in front of your camera and the focus is just like switching from the bird to the, the sky, you will have uh, some sort of glitch in, uh, in the timeline. So for me, that's the most important thing. And then you have to think about the interval. So for all the cameras, I, I don't think all the cameras have the, um, a, a timer inside. So this one, the uh, Sony uh, A7R3, uh, have the, a, ti a timer inside the camera. So I can, without any remote, um, make my timeless. But for most of uh, cameras, you have to have a um, small external uh, remote to to set the the interval because uh, a time lapse is basically this. It's just uh, pictures uh, every uh, three seconds or every five seconds. So choosing your shutter is also an important uh, step. I usually go between uh, three and five seconds because. Uh, with uh, experience you will uh, learn to to see how the things are moving and uh, which shutter should you choose but if you're going to shoot uh, clouds uh, in general I use three second shutter uh, three, three second um, sorry interval between the, the shots and if you shoot something that is more um, 
that takes more time. For example, um, a sunset or a sunrise when you will not maybe see the... You can do the sunset in front of camera when you see the sun go behind the mountain or behind the valley. But you can also do it uh, not directly in front of the sun, but uh, 90 degrees uh, from it when you see just the shadows of the trees and uh, everything else go larger. So uh, for these kind of shots, uh, the sun and the shadows are moving much slower than the clouds. So advise around five and six uh, seconds of interval between each shot. The most needed accessories are indeed the remote because if you don't have the in-camera system you won't be able to make a real time-lapse. But uh, what can be useful uh, at least is the, a tripod like this, uh, even a really basic one. Uh, because uh, you can just uh, set your camera on the, on the rocks or some other kind of stuff but you will need a bit of height uh, sometimes so a tripod will be a good accessory. Uh, filters can also enhance you, the way you're making time lapses. Uh, I think about uh, city time lapse when you want to have the light of the cars uh, just a bit uh, more uh, fluid. But uh, I think for beginners, the the best thing to start with is the the tripod camera and remote is uh, already a really good um, really good start. Okay, Gaëtan, thank you very much for these basic pointers. I think we have a lot of super valuable information here. You can do these things, you can use these techniques with any camera, but if you happen to have a Fujifilm X-T4 or X-T3, you can just watch the following video because there I will show you what settings to use on these exact cameras. I hope you enjoyed it and see you on the next video.